as many as are faithful, and as many as come to church and confess and partake of the Holy Mysteries, they live the sacramental life, the mysteriological life of the church, the mysteriaki life. But those who go deeper and go to the source, the wellspring, these live the mysteries of the church, the mysteries of God in their hearts. And we are in the midst of the feast of mid Pentecost. And in this feast we hear concerning water. At mid feast, give thou my thirsty soul to drink of the waters of piety. O Lord, for thou, o Savior, didst cry unto all, whosoever is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And the subsequent Sunday, we have the Sunday of the Samaritan woman, where this theme of water continues, since our Savior, at the sixth hour, wearied from his journey, sits by the well. He's wearied from his journey because he is showing to us his human nature. He's wearied from his journey because he's showing to us that he has taken on the burden of Adam. He's wearied and tired from dealing with the things here on earth, being God before the ages at the sixth hour. And at the sixth hour, we are taught that this is the time when Eve was banished. By now you would have heard me say many times concerning the venom of the evil serpent, which passed on to Eve, which passed on from Eve to Adam. That is, the voice of the evil one speaks, and he tries to implant poison in us. And so we need the appropriate medicine to be able to take out this venom. And so now on this day, our Savior speaks to a woman. At that time, at the sixth hour, Eve heard the voice of the serpent. And now the Samaritan woman hears the voice of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you would have also heard by now that every word that comes out of the mouth of God contains power and has great grace and is able to cure the malady which, is, which has been implanted in man from the serpent. For the serpent is poisonous and he has venom. But God is the God of the living and he has life. And in him can we find only life and healing. For he is the medicine of our soul, and His Holy Communion is the medicine of immortality. So in order for us to live, we need water. We get thirsty. Summer is nigh at hand. Here we are. It's getting hotter. We drink a little more water because we're getting thirsty. But our Savior wants us to understand these things, all these things, in a spiritual way. We can't live without this water. And so our Savior went to the well. And the Greek word well is pigi, but pigi also means source. And this is why I said from the beginning that we have to get to the source, to the essence of the matter. And the well is deep. That is what we heard in today's scripture reading. And the poison has been implanted deeply. On Holy Saturday, we heard from the, from the writings of St. Epiphanius of Cyprus concerning the descendant into Hades, where our Savior went deep, deep into the nethermost parts of the earth. And what does that mean? We need to make a connection with the scriptural phrase, for earth art thou. So our Savior descended into the nethermost parts of the earth. He descended into the nethermost parts, deeply into the heart of man. 
and the well is deep. So our loving Savior starts up a conversation. In order to heal that venom that was implanted, he spoke. And he said to the Samaritan woman, who providentially at that moment went to fetch water, give me water to drink. He's trying now to get her attention and to catch her, to bring her to himself. But he does it in such a way that there are many lessons to be taught. For God very well knew that this scriptural passage would be in the scriptures and that we would be hearing it and that the Christians would be hearing this for centuries and centuries after his resurrection. And he happens to be in Samaria, and he happens to be speaking to a Samaritan woman. And this was not permitted for the Jewish people because the Samaritans were heretics and schismatics. So this is why the Jews, who at the time were the true believers, were not speaking to those who were not the true believers. But our Savior here speaks. And it's not the first time that we have a reference in the scriptures concerning Samaritans. Remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. And so this is now a, a point that our Savior tries to get across to us. Because the Jews, according to their own standards, not being able to recognize our Savior, judged him judged God for not keeping his own rules, his own law. But as we said, he is the God of the Sabbath, and he's the one that implements the rules for a certain reason. And he is also the one that tries to help us to understand that we've gone off, oftentimes, when we don't really understand the spirit of the law. People interpret the letter of the law according to their own likings, according to their own passions, according to their own interpretations. And our Savior says there's no room for this in the church. We do not have our own interpretations, but we must understand things according to the spirit in which our Savior tries to teach them to us. And how are we to understand the spirit? If we worship God in spirit and truth, if we are true believers, if we are sincere, if we try to fight our old man, if we try to humble our pride, if we try to cut our will, if we do all those things which are necessary for us to find Christ, to meet Christ, to accept Christ, and to hear his voice, then we will understand the spirit of the law. Then we will get to the source of the matter, to the essence of the matter, to the wellspring of the matter. So our Savior starts up his conversation and he automatically starts his work and she automatically starts being enlightened and you see the progress in this conversation of her illumination. And so our Savior asks her, but she asks back, how is it that you're speaking to me? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And our Savior says, right away he gets pretty blunt. If you knew who was speaking to you, you would have asked of him to give you water. Because he's the only one that can provide water, which brings unto life everlasting. Water which will never make us thirst. He will be the one that will nourish us, that will grant unto us what is necessary for us to be true human beings, for us to be a true man, And she responds to him, the well is deep, and truly the well is deep. As we said, the sickness is deep also. And our Savior continues the conversation with her. And she finally gets to the point where she gets to matters of faith. Our fathers worshipped here in this mountain, and you say, the Jews say that we must, talk, we must worship in Jerusalem. And our Savior, trying to help us all understand things 
in spiritual in a spiritual way teaches us that neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem but in spirit and in truth is God worshipped for God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and God must worship him in sp- and men must worship God in spirit and in truth so the woman continues to be enlightened and she says to him now the question reverses our savior starts the question remember he says give me water to drink and now she says give me of this water and her savior wishing for her to deal with herself and her own matters and wishing to stress that in order to partake of this water we must deal with our issues he says to her go and call the husband knowing of course the whole situation and where she was spiritually and she says i have no husband and her savior responds thou hast rightly said thou hast no husband for thou hast five husbands and he whom thou hast now is not thy husband and so she responds of course sir here we have the word sir again which also means lord i perceive that thou art a prophet and this is where she says concerning the spirit and where are the fathers uh, with the fathers worship and our savior helps her he continues to put into her life and this water and she goes back and she tells all of her uh, fellow villagers concerning Jesus Christ and she says i met a man and he told me all that i've done mayhaps perhaps this is the christ and it's very interesting that the people believed because of her word you remember now that eve passed on the word to adam and here the samaritan woman passes on the word to her fellow countrymen and they believe this is amazing because in other scriptural references we find that even though our savior worked such great miracles like the healing of the demoniac and the, and the demons went into the swine that went down the, the cliff they asked him to leave well these people asked him to stay and our lord did stay for another 2 days you see how important the disposition of the soul is you see how important our spiritual state is and how we respond to the voice of god for all of these people heard the voice of god and all of them responded differently and it all had to do with where they were spiritually whether they were sincere people whether they were searching or not or whether they were had delved deeply into worldly matters so much so that they were not able neither did they want to hear the voice of god because they wanted to live comfortably but they were not wise and they did not understand that the comfort the true comfort comes from jesus christ which is everlasting and we shall never thirst and we shall never hunger if we are with christ jesus and so the people then of sikar a village of samarita of the samaritan said now we believe not because of thy word they said to saint, to saint fortini who is the samaritan woman but because which of course at the beginning they believed because of her word but now they believe also because they heard for themselves and we believe and know that this is the christ and these people were heretics and schismatics and yet they were so ready and they accepted the word faster than those who were supposed to be the true believers same for tini the samaritan woman had everything going against her she did not belong to the true chosen people the israelites the jews 
She belonged to a sect. And she was a sinful woman. She lived in sin. But you know, and our Savior continues to preach to us the preaching, the purpose of his coming to earth, the healing of man is found in repentance. And as we said at the beginning of this sermon, there are many people who live the sacramental life of the church. They come to church, they participate in the Holy Eucharist, they go to confession. Some of them, many people of course, don't have any serious, very serious issues, but yet so many of them are, are lost. And it just so happens that people who have serious issues are searching. They feel broken. They're looking for help. They want to be redeemed. And because of their own sickness and because of their own illness, they're looking for a Redeemer, and they find Him. Again, according to the disposition of their heart, where they are spiritually. Look at the many great saints of our church, who because of their sinfulness actually found repentance. Like the Holy Prophet David, like St. Mary of Egypt, like St. Fotini, the Samaritan woman, like St. Taisia, the former harlot, like so many others, and these are the beautiful stories. These are the beautiful teachings of our church that our Lord has come specifically to heal the broken person. So at this point now we have the Samaritan woman, St. Fotini, with us. And every single person that is recorded in the Book of Life Plays a very, and played a very special role in the economia and in the preaching of our Savior Jesus Christ, has a special boldness before the Lord. Remember that in the life of St. Peter the Athenite, St. Nicholas appeared to him and said, pray to St. Simeon, the God-receiver, because he had boldness. He has great boldness because he received the 40-day-old child, Jesus Christ. He was deemed worthy, of course, having been prepared beforehand to receive in his arms the Savior, Jesus Christ. But also Joseph of Arimathea, at the end, the crucifixion of our Savior. Joseph of Arimathea boldly went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and he too held Christ in his arms, the dead body of Jesus Christ. And so all of these saints play a very important role, and St. Fotini is now another of the first great examples of repentance, of turning back to God. And in this gospel passage, we see how our Savior heals that which was broken and twisted and manipulated from the time of the fall. For at the sixth hour, when Eve and Adam were banished from paradise, at that very hour, Eve, when Eve fell into sin, at that very hour, the Samaritan woman hears the voice of our Savior Jesus Christ. And in this conversation, she finally comes to the wellspring, to the source of life, Jesus Christ. Let us apply these things to us. As human beings, definitely we are in the middle of a battlefield. And the evil spirits are always trying to whisper into our ears, and they're always trying to speak to us. And the main point and their main purpose is to delude us, to fool us, to think that that which is black is white and that which is white is black, to think that which is good for us is actually bad for us, to think that those who help us are actually our enemies. Everything opposite to what reality and truth is, that's what the evil demons try to implant in, in us. But we are healed by the voice of God, by His Word. And so now, once again, in church, we are hearing the Word of God, and He speaks to us as He spoke to the Samaritan woman. 
Every time we should remind ourselves of this, and every time since we are so forgetful and ignorant, we should open our hearts and our ears to the voice of our Lord. In the list of sins, we find that one of the sins is forgetfulness. And sometimes we can have some type of a great revelation where things become clear to us. Spiritual things become clear to us. Spiritual matters become clear to us. And then all of a sudden, within a day, we could have forgotten. How many times have we said the same things over and over, and yet we're still learning them? And this is the reason why we hear and listen and open our hearts to our Savior Jesus Christ. There are many highlights in the Divine Liturgy. You should know that the Trisayon, the Thrice Holy Hymn, is a very special time. We worship the Holy Trinity. The voice of the angels cry out in the heavenly kingdom, Holy, Holy, Holy. And they delight in that. And the demons tremble when they hear the Thrice Holy Hymn. And we have the Cherubim, where the church is filled with the angels, and we chant, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory, and at that time heaven and earth are united. And we can raise ourselves up to heaven when we hear the voice of our Savior, Take, eat, this is my body. And when we hear that, where are we? What are we thinking? Do we hear the voice? Drink of it. All of you, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. These are the words that we must hear. We must open our ears to hear the word of God so that we could also open our hearts. And let us also find in this beautiful gospel passage today that we should be very cautious in judging others. And that we should be looking towards ourselves. And that in order for the woman to receive, the Samaritan woman, to receive of the water of life, the, the water springing up unto life everlasting, she had to deal with her issues. And that's where our Savior said, go call thy husband. And at that time, a confession was made. So for us to drink of this water, we also must deal with our own issues, and we must confess our sins before the Lord and before our confessor. And we must know what it is that we are receiving. There is nothing like it. There is no gift in this life, in this world, that can surpass that which is provided for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the time is passing. May our Lord grant unto us to partake of this water, which springs up unto life everlasting, so that we may rejoice in all those things which come from our Savior, that we may rejoice in the nourishment which comes directly from Him. God is spirit, and He must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. And not many days hence, after the Feast of the Ascension, we will worship our Savior on the Feast of Pentecost, we will worship God the Father, and we will worship God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wishes to dwell in all of us. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. But we have sinned, and therefore we look at the example of Saint Fotini, and we repent, and we ask our Savior to grant unto us understanding. We ask him to grant unto us to open our ears, to hear the precepts of his holy gospel and his holy teachings which contain life, and that we may open our hearts so that there we may discover that our Lord descended into the nethermost parts of the earth, and earth art thou, and our Lord descends into the nethermost parts of our own hearts to deliver us by his own word, by his own voice. We are all healed. 
To our God be glory, majesty and honor unto the endless ages of ages. Amen.